Berisalium just released this new video. Why are scientists making robot insects? It looks super interesting. Some that are powered by tiny combustion engines the size of a penny. Oh, I can't hear it. One day <laughs> they could work in on. swarms. They could save your life or even spy on you. Spying on you? That looks really like the Hunter's Secret device in Dune. If you guys watched that movie, I love the Dune saga. Maybe we're getting to that soon machine fights human can fly and swim but since it weighs oh. only 175 milligrams about the mass of two cheerios surface tension is a problem this happens because water molecules are slightly polar groups of these molecules pull in all directions but at the surface there's no water above so the pull is only sideways and downwards this imbalance creates strong cohesive forces that compress the surface into a tightly packed layer making it difficult to break this is the same effect that lets water striders walk on the surfaces of ponds and lakes. Maybe also Jesus? Jesus was also walking on water. Now that's great if you want to stay on top of the water, but this barrier can also be a problem if you want to go underwater. To escape this... I wonder why these insects need to go underwater. It's not like they're submarines. What? Do they need to do on the water surface? But the robot is still stuck in that top layer of surface tension. So a sparker inside the chamber ignites the gas, and the explosion breaks the surface tension and shoots the <laughs> robot 30 centimeters into the air. Wow, that is a very ingenious design. This tiny explosion, it can break through the surface tension. That's the magic of physics and engineering. This robot found a different way to break through the surface tension. It uses these large water repellent copper pads on its feet to walk on the water. Oh, that's but so when adorable. it needs to dive beneath, it applies 600 volts to those pads, which creates a positive charge that attracts water molecules to it and breaks the hydrophobic barrier. And that allows it to sink on command. Wow, that is so cool. Then once submerged, it can walk underwater. Oh, that's so Both of these I like the walking robot more than the flying one. The flying one looks dangerous. Were made by Dr. Kevin Chan at MIT. Okay, of course, it's Kevin Chan. <laughs> that is so generic Asian. He looks exactly the part of who should be designing these robots at MIT. We are looking at the flight room, and this is where we do all of our flight experiment. And as you can see, it has motion capture cameras. This lab is one of the only places in the world where robots this small attempt flight. Okay, so because this robot's so small, it has such low inertia, right? So you're saying that it could flip faster than any other drone in the world? Beyond 7,000 degree per second. All Asians in the lab. Okay, I have no complaint about this, but it is just so stereotypical. But good for these guys. They look very smart. It is very on brand of how a academic engineering institute will look like. I mean, you can actually hit the button. You let me hit the button? Oh, okay. Here is a white guy, but he is not the researcher from the lab. He is the producer of the channel. All right. I thought I found the token white guy in this environment, but no. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, why is it not flying? You know who's it? <laughs> yes, who's Getting these it robots is. flying is tough. I mean, they're the size of bees, so the internal mechanisms have to be even smaller, like the parts of a watch. Yeah. <laughs> Components have to be precise to within five microns. That's a tenth the width of a human hair. It's so small. In the summer, we have those very big flies zipping by in the lab, and I was making the statement of, oh, they're just showing off. <laughs> Take two. Three, two, one. Woo! Okay, it's a success. Congratulations, yay. So why do they do that? Yeah, why do well, they do that? Well, it comes down to this scale phenomenon. Larger objects typically have less surface area relative to their volume. Well, it's because drag depends on surface area. So if you have more surface area to volume, well, you're gonna have a lot more drag. And also, at that small scale, you'll be much lighter relative to that drag. So you're not gonna have as much inertia, so you'll get pushed around more by the air. So you can't just soar through it like a bird. And that's why bees and other insects flap their wings a lot. Okay. What they're doing is generating swirls of air above the top of the wing. 
This is such a beautiful visual. I really like how they use color to demonstrate fluid dynamic. This robot was inspired by seeds from a maple tree. Then it can generate enough lift to fly. But this robot isn't quite insect scale. Oh, I see Chinese. I don't know if it's still happening. Chinese researchers faced a lot of problems with the U.S. government. A few years ago, they were charged with espionage. I was just thinking if researchers are still safe to conduct these engineering research. Because this looks like drone technology. And drones are the key weaponry in the contemporary war. This really looks like technology that will be implemented in the military. So to power the first Robobees, they had wings driven by special crystals called piezoelectric crystals. Instead of using piezos to drive the wings, these bees use soft polymers. They effectively work like tiny muscles. Drop it here. They take a polymer and they coat each side with carbon nanotubes. That creates two effective conducting plates. So if you apply opposite charges to these plates, that pulls them together, stretching out the polymer. Oh, but if really cool. light charges are applied to both plates, they repel, and so the polymer shrinks. It looks like marshmallow cookies. And if we roll up layers like this into a tube, we can amplify the force they generate. It stretches up to 25% of its length. By cycling the voltage hundreds of times per second, these muscles drive the Robobee's wings. But if it's pierced by a needle, the carbon nanotubes get pulled in, and then the plates touch, causing a short circuit that renders the muscle useless. But the scientists have even found a way around this. When high current is cycled, the carbon nanotubes that are touching burn off, and so the muscle self-heals. Wow, that is amazing. This really feels like the beginning of self-healing robots, which is quite scary. In those movies and the AI war, the robots can also heal themselves. This is the technology they need. We already have that here. Invented a process to perform laser surgery on the robot. You're creating smaller defect around a very, very big defect. And then by isolating the small defect, you're using the small defect to isolate the big defect. Mm -hmm. So that was what we call the laser assisted clearing process. One robot was really tested to its limits. Its artificial muscle was pierced by cactus needles. This is what we see in movies. You can never kill that robot, no matter how much damage you have imposed on it. Um, there we go, we have the technology now. This Robobee conserves energy by hopping. This tech was used on another drone at the City University of Hong Kong. Normally, this drone can only fly continuously for 6.3 minutes. But with the hopping attachment, it can keep moving for 50 minutes, nearly 10 oh, times wow. longer. That is fascinating. Scientists believe this could be even more effective in low gravity, low air resistance environments like Mars. So it would be perfect for an Ingenuity version 2.0. Okay, this will be a self-sufficient drone in the war. This is definitely something the military is eyeing on. And it's developed in Hong Kong, that means it's Chinese technology then? That's where this cockroach-inspired robot from earlier, Hammer, comes in. It's incredibly fast. It can run 10.5 body lengths per second. Speaking in relative terms, that's faster than a horse. And it's versatile. Its special foot pads can apply a voltage to polarized metal surfaces, creating an opposite charge underneath its feet. And that's how it's able to stick to metal surfaces, similar to a balloon sticking to a wall after you rub it on your hair. Rolls-Royce and Harvard are working to put hammer inside of engines to inspect for turbine cracks, even upside down. And since it's math- Oh, this is so adorable. But imagine this thing becomes self-aware and it can just invade anywhere that you're hiding and inject a poison into your body. So an ideal rescue robot should be able to navigate tight spaces, withstand damage and debris, operate across varied environments, and be inexpensive enough to be replaced if destroyed. These features are amazing for discovering an enemy in the hideouts. The idea is to deploy swarms of insect-sized micro-robots to search for survivors in disaster zones. 
Okay, we have seen this in Black Mirror. But I understand when I say swarm, you might get a little worried. I mean, swarms of miniature killer robots are straight out of dystopian sci-fi. Oh my god. I think the this is what I've been Doom talking about. The killer robot bees from Black Mirror. You might be familiar with that, like, famous. Okay, I'm a prophet. These are the two shows I cannot stop talking about while watching this video. Famous Black Mirror TV episode where all like the bees. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When that came out, everybody that I had ever met in my entire life sent me a text message that was like, hey, bro, you seen this? But this idea isn't so far-fetched. In the early 2000s, bees were dying off. It's called Colony Collapse Disorder. Congress is holding hearings. Even the vice president has been briefed. In fact, the whole RoboBee project started with the goal of replacing the bees. Thankfully, that idea didn't last long. Bees can do much better jobs in terms of pollination than those robots, much more cheaply. To pollinate, you need a huge colony of bees to do those effectively. Also, from an environmental protection perspective, I think it doesn't make sense to replace bees with robotics bees. But we were not talking about pollinating bees, we are talking about swarms that can kill people. So they won't replace the bees, but I can still easily imagine a world where these same robots that are supposed to help in a disaster are secretly being used to spy on me. That's terrifying. Is there any fear from you about what they could be used for, like, ethically? We really focus on the fundamental science and solving the fun technical problems. And as a society in general, we all should think about collectively how to prevent those new technology from doing harm. I'm, I'm not worrying Dr. Chen will apply this to some dangerous technology, but other people could do it. I really love this video. Fascinating technology. Kind of excited that we are having these technology that can make those shows come true. What other shows should I watch with you guys? Let me know in the comments and I will see you in the next video.